Hello, everybody, can you hear me? Oh, excellent. So I am so excited today. This is an absolute treat. It is my first time in Poland. I had pierogies last night. I heard that that's the thing to do. <laughs> and they were fancy pierogies as well. So super, super excited to be here today. Um, I am here to talk about how you embrace yourself for the tech-powered future. And when you talk about innovation, when you talk about tech, continuous improvement, you can't get by without having a bit of Darwin. So he is famous for this quote, it is not the smartest or the strongest to survive, it is those who are the most adaptable to change. And I work at a 300-year-old bank in the UK, one of the big four banks. I know a little bit about making sure the bank continues to survive and adapt and to be able to change. And that's increasingly important in a world because financial services and technology are two of the most productive sectors in the UK. And actually, they are ripe for disruption. There is no more exciting time to be in this field because this is where the change has been happening. And that's why it's so important to make sure we have a culture where as a bank, we are more a technology company. We are no longer just a bank. However, women are underrepresented in technology in the UK. Women only make up 15% of people who work in STEM. And when you talk about leadership, only 5%. Only one, less than 1% of venture funding goes to female-founded startups. Some appalling stats. However, we know that female-run businesses make more money, more likely to capture new markets, and have higher ROI. Despite that, fintechs find that the most difficult skill in recruiting is coding and software development. <coughs> and I, in my day job, I look after the Rose Review. And what we found is that for one, only one in three entrepreneurs in the UK are female. And if we were to help women start, scale, sustain their businesses at the same rate of men, we would literally add an additional 250 billion pounds to the UK economy. That is huge and a bigger GDP than a lot of small countries. Now, has the paradigm shifted? This is a real advert that was in the 1970s, apparently saying that women belong under a men's shoe. How, uh, but this is in 2018 and about a year ago, the NHS, National Health Service in the UK, launched an ad pretty much saying if you get pregnant, as a woman, you have to give up heels and red lipstick. And this is 2019. Earlier this year, the Bowdoin Children's Catalog actually came out with another ad saying that girls need to run around with flowers and play with them, whereas boys would look for adventure and mischief. There are too many issues. And not only that, Fortune did this really interesting study about performance reviews for high performers in tech. These are the high performers, by the way. And what it found is that 85% of the female performance reviews actually had negative personality criticisms. It said that women were, that they were abrasive, strident, or irrational, and similar sentiments only showed up in 2% of the male um, reviews. So whether we like it or not, this is an issue. This is something we need to work on. So here's a little bit of insight into my own journey. This is me back in school. I am a Buddhist and maybe a little bit Taoist. That's how I grew up. But you can see my mother decided to send me to a Catholic school. And this is where you'll notice that many of the other students were also Buddhist along with myself. And that's Sister Mary over there. And what that really taught me at a really young age 
is how to be really respectful of other religions. Now, granted, my mother only sent me there because she was trying to avoid me joining a gang. Uh, I grew up in New York. This was the 80s. This is not the Disneyland that you see nowadays in Manhattan. This is, um, it was a bit rougher, I would say, back then. And I started from a young age, so we weren't a very well-off family. Uh, my mother was a garment worker, my, my father owned a small business, and they literally scraped together every single penny that they could find. And they spent $3,000, which is a huge amount of money for someone who is living on the breadline, and they bought us the Macintosh SE. It was the coolest computer of its time. It had one whole megabyte of memory. It had a black and white screen with a mouse click. It had a GUI, a graphical user interface. It was one of the first computers to have that. And this was because my mother firmly believed that computers would take over the world and that this was how her children were gonna lift themselves from poverty. Then, some enterprising Chinese people working out of the warehouse, empty warehouse, next to the garment factory, decided to set up some coding schools, computer classes, which my mother kindly enrolled me into as a form of daycare. And that is where I learned how to play Tetris. I went to coding classes. I learned how to type with AOL Instant Messenger. I spent loads of time as a geek, an inter-relay child. And I actually learned how to code HTML just so I could share photos, idiot, idiotic photos now, of me and my friends in high school. Because little did I know Instagram would come and make it so much easier to do. And I've done a lot of different things in my career. I was born and raised in New York, had to change and adapt when I landed in the UK about 10 years ago. I met a French man in a bar, and there we are. Um, I also decided to run, I, I was not a very good um, in my university studies, so I went to night school for, I went to Parsons School of Design and got a certification in floral design. And that's when I decided to run a floral business doing weddings and events. Um, luckily, not good at my studies, did not translate into my career, and I worked at Deloitte as an auditor for hedge funds, private equity funds, and investment management. And I was an FD when I first joined the bank, um, looking after our corporate division. Then, I love cooking. Food, pierogies, all of that. And I realized that working at a bank might not be so great for, as a career as a chef. So I started cooking a lot. I started inviting people over to my home. And before you know it, I had these sold out events where I was cooking for 40 to 50 people at a time cooking food for my heritage called Burmese Kitchen by Wincy. I'm an absolute geek throughout all of this. I have a machine learning certificate with Stanford University. I um, founded the Netwest Girls Can Code to find more people who could code. And I also run the Rose Review. There's a bit of talk about roses today, which is interesting. Um, this is my day to day. This is so great because we have such a big, diverse audience. I am normally in. Um, talking about fintech, banking, artificial intelligence, uh, blockchain, all these kinds of things in gray rooms with gray people, I would say. So it is a tremendous treat for me to be in this room with so many diverse people here today. So I faced a lot of barriers trying to come up as a technologist in the bank. As a woman, as a person of color, I am often the only person in the boardroom in either of those categories. So rather than sitting around moaning about it, I got together with someone called Borju Karabork, who is an engineer in our quant analytics division um, in our investment bank. And we decided that we needed more girls who can code. So we simply started NatWest Girls Can Code. And I'm glad to say that we've been running conferences ever since in the UK, sponsored by NatWest, showing a way more diverse group of speakers than we I normally see at tech conferences. I also started the Tech She Can Charter. This is with me and 18 other women, kick-ass women in tech that I met in the industry, who said, actually, something's got to give. We've got to change things. 
why don't we start with the next generation? No one's looking at that. So we started educating 10 to 13 year olds across the UK because that's where we found the sweet spot. And within only a year and a half, we have now over 130 signatories to the charter. And that includes the likes of Rolls-Royce, uh, PwC, Tesco's, et cetera, a lot of big name brands, as well as smaller companies. I personally lead the Enrich Education uh, work stream. And in our trial this year, we went through 700 students, who both boys and girls, under the banner of Tech We Can, because quite simply, everyone can. And what we found is that 91% enjoyed the lesson plan, and the most, the fact that I love the most is that 29% of the girls in those lessons, of just the girls, even though we taught it to both boys and girls, at the beginning were interested in careers in tech, by the end of the six-week lessons, 47% are now considering careers in tech. And Tech We Can, we launched this just about a month ago, is now a free website where any school in the UK can log on, download lesson plans, and teach their kids in their classrooms about lessons in tech. There, in the first week, we had about 40 schools sign up, about 1.24 million mentions, and over almost 2,000 people at the site. I also decided I had a bit of free time, so started a podcast called Technically Speaking by Nat West. Please do, um, it's available wherever you download podcasts. And really, me and Bourjou decided that actually, we need to change the discussion. And just by being different types of people to host the podcast, we have all kinds. We have men, we have women, all kinds of experts to come talk about interesting topics in tech that we find, such as, is there a business case for ethics? Or should I teach my kids to code? And through all of this, I've learned five things. I'm also super excited today that I can formally announce that I was also named by the Financial Times as of today as one of the top 100 BAME influencers in UK technology, which is amazing. Thank you. So throughout my journey, I have five bits of advice that I would share. First, believe in your own value. I did my first public, public speaking gig in two, July 2017, so not very long ago. And I remember thinking, uh, when someone had asked me to do it, to say, and it was at a UX conference as well, and I said, I don't, I'm not a UX specialist. I haven't done 20 years in UX. Why would they want to hear me? And, and the person who told me to do it, um, who, who, I, who I love dearly, Alberta, she said, but Wincy, they just want to hear about things, interesting things that you're doing at the bank. And this is when I was leading one of the digital propositions team, looking at the future of digital banking customer experiences for the bank. And so I went, it went really well. I got asked by many others to do talks, and before you know it, I think in that year, first year, I did over 26 talks before the year was out. That was from July to the end of the year, all public. And what I would say is, please believe in your own value. Humans are amazing people, resilient beings, able to do anything. And I certainly did not expect I would ever be standing in Poland doing something like this <laughs> um, at that time. So believe in yourself. Believe that you can do it. Stay authentic. This is me on the set of My Million Pound Menu. Yes, I was asked by the BBC. My cooking had gotten so popular that I was asked by the BBC to join a show called My Million Pound Menu. For all of those outside of the UK, it is now available on Netflix globally. Please watch it. It's in season two, episode six. And one thing I realized, the reason I resonated so much is because I cooked the dishes the way I grew up eating it. I didn't try to change it, to make it less spicy, to make it less sour, to adapt the palate for the UK public. I just made it the way I grew up eating it. And that was actually what the people loved, what my customers love when they come and eat my food. And when I started working at the bank, 
you have to remember, I grew up in New York in quite an aggressive, kind of no-nonsense kind of way. And I was very direct. And I kept getting this feedback, Quincy, you're a bit too loud. You're a bit too, um, you're, you're so enthusiastic, but I don't really want to hear it in my office. Or, or maybe you want to calm down a little bit. Or maybe you want to change words you want to say. And I was getting all stressed out about it and until one day I said, you know what, enough's enough. This is how I talk. This is how I am. This is what I, who I am. And if you don't like it, then tough. This is it. And once I embraced it, once I said, this is me, that was when I started getting promoted. Doors started opening because what I realized is that when you are yourself in the office or wherever you are, you are also the best version of yourself. You're not trying to be someone different or trying to be something different. And when you're the best version of yourself, you produce the best work and you make the best connections. So can I implore that all of you stay authentic? Do things that spark joy. So at the start of the year, I turned on Netflix and I started watching a show that many people around the world started watching called The Art of Tidying with Marie Kondo. And I started spinning around in my closet, folding up all my clothes into perfect little triangles so I could see all of them in my shelves and, and everything. And one of the things that she says about cluttering is hold your object and say, does this spark joy? And if it sparks joy, you keep it. And if you don't, you throw it out. I think I threw out about 20 or 30 bin liners um, full of clothes to charity. And one thing I, I realized is that this applies to the rest of your life as well. Life is very short. A lot of people spend a lot of time doing jobs and things that they really don't enjoy. And as a result, they're down, they're unhappy. And what I would emphasize is do the things that spark joy. I knew that the bank, my career in the bank, would not include cooking. Unless, although since the show has come out, I have been offered the RBS canteen, which is probably not exactly what I thought it would go. But, but there is nothing that makes me happier than standing over that stove, mixing a bowl of monghinga, which is like one of my favorite stews and curries. It actually warms the soul. So as difficult as it is, it is something that creates pure joy in me. So don't waste time working and doing jobs that you don't love. My current job as head of Rose Review Implementation, I didn't even go for it. Literally, Ellison, who is our CEO, asked me to take that job, and it is literally my dream job. So continue to do the things that you love, the joy, you can't hide the passion of some doing something you love. And people will see, sense it, and pluck you. Um, take hold of opportunities. This is our old CEO, Ross McEwen. One of the things is never, always never let things pass you by. So Ross McEwen, when, before he became our CEO of our bank, I watched a talk by him, and I remember being so inspired by what he said that I was thinking, Ross, I want to work for Ross. He became CEO of the bank for five years. And I saw him at a breakfast one day. He was just at um, one, of our, one of our business schools and one of our buildings. And I was sitting down with breakfast, and I was like, Ross, you don't know who I am, but you are my hero, and I want to work for you. And he just laughed, tried to say something sensible. And I was just like, no, no, I don't really care about all these sensible things. I don't really want to talk about cash points or ATMs and how our fees are doing. I want to talk about how I can sit outside your office every single day. And he said, no, Wincy, you need a real job. So <laughs> I was in finance at the time. He made a lot of introductions very kindly. I am thankful to him to this day. And I ended up working for our managing director of digital, making one of my big career pivots and having the time of my life. Absolutely loving what I did. And that 
I was sat at a table with 10 other people who said a lot of really sensible things. They were like, oh, Ross, what do you think about the strategy? What are your thoughts about this? And, and, and I was just so focused, so minded, that at the end of breakfast, I was the only person he gave his business card to. So take hold of opportunities when they show up in front of you. And harness negative energy for good. This is a big one. So I have had all kinds of things happen to me. I've been sexually harassed. I've been called racist things. I've been, um, I've been, you know, skipped over for promotions, missed out on jobs, and you name it. I've I've been through it. I've had some sort of version of it. Now I could sit here and just moan about it and be like, oh, poor me, I'm such a victim. But I decided that actually. I'm probably not the only one who feels this way. There are others like it. So instead, I'm going to start Girls Can Code. I found other people. We set up a conference. And we had hundreds of people come to the very first conference. We had the CEO of Microsoft there, our own CEO, and a lot of bank executives as well. And we had loads of people. I had so many overwhelming stories of people that I helped afterwards. And that's when and I would never have had that fire in my belly to go out and do that if it wasn't for all those negative things that happened to me. It was only because I was so fed up. But instead of harnessing that energy and lashing out, I decided to harness the energy and turn it for good. And I think that is where a lot of my success has come from. Not from moaning about things, but by using that energy to lift others around me. So, when you talk about innovation, continuous improvement, all that stuff, have a think about how you think. This is a puzzle that I love by um, Gela Boscovich, who is one of my dear friends, a worldwide global speaker as well. So, when you are looking at how to get to the end, do you follow the normal career path? Or do you just find the most efficient way to get to your result? And I love this quote by Alan Kay who is the founder of what we call a graphical user interface, which is mouse clicking. Steve Jobs and Alan, I think, were a bit, you know, used to talk all the time. And he said that the best way to predict the future is to create it. So what I would ask you today is to embrace yourself, be authentic, do things that spark joy, and to create your own futures. Thank you.